Look, occasionally you're in the right place at the right time. Uh, that was the SCG on Saturday afternoon for what was a remarkable game of finals footy. The Giants, Lauren, they were so good for three quarters before one. That was a remarkable comeback from the Swannies. Yeah, it was just incredible, this performance, wasn't it, to sort of withstand that pressure late in the game. I don't know if you're hearing us quite... Recovered from being at the SCG, oh, you lucky thing of yeah. what it was. I mean, it doesn't. Even, it's not even arguably the game of the round. It was well and truly head and shoulders above that. The noise that, right there, that was the equalling goal from uh, Heaney. Was, that I've man, I mean, heard. Dean Cox said yeah, it all. It was really, and, and then, then he then choked he back to business. John Long, I'm sorry about that, Oh, Chief. sorry, boss. Sorry, boss, <laughs> back to business. But... Uh, I mean, it was incredible. We've, we've had so much focus on the Northern States this season with opening round happening yeah. up in Sydney uh, and, and sort of that push to, to not recognise it as interstate anymore from Victoria. And who would have thought it would be the two Harbour City teams that turned on one like that? It was amazing. Where does it rank in regards to finals games? Because it was spectacular. Well, I mean, it was only three days ago, so I don't want to sort of fall victim to recency bias, but you'd have to say it was easily top ten finals that we've seen, not only in recent oh, yeah. times, but, but ever. I mean, those, those moments in particular that we've highlighted there stand on their own two feet as great finals moments, but the game as a whole was just incredible. Yeah, it was the story, because it was... They kept... They were back, then they kept coming forward, just as you'd think they were going to overtake, you know, the Giants. Suddenly, the Giants would kick ahead, and then you have Heaney doing all his stuff, and, you know, it's just one of those games where it doesn't matter what the sport is. You could have never watched that sport before. Yes. The energy coming through... I was yes. watching it on TV in a pub in Melbourne. No-one left. People stopped going to the bar for the last 10 minutes because they just didn't want to lose their spot. What was the moment like when Tom Papley and Toby Green showed them Everyone was some shocked. of their best work? <laughs> Everyone was shocked that those two would be. But it had, it had niggle, it had, you know, it just had absolutely everything. He was nothing short of awesome, Isaac Kenny was. He absolutely brilliant. And this, this is one of those moments you talk about. This is Mark on top of Jack Buckley. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, and it'll be remembered for a long time, especially those of us who were there, even though some of us were in the bathroom at the time. But still, oh. I was. You can't have been. <laughs> I was. It was just <laughs> after half time. What were you thinking? Well, I mean, clearly. Uh, it looks, thinking, great. But... looks great, but uh, some of the still shots are yes. spectacular. Yeah. Like, yeah. how high is he? There, there we go. Like, Which that's goes... eight foot in the air. It goes to show, doesn't it, I, I mean, in, I know it's a split-second moment and, and they're not really probably thinking straight with that much heat in the game, but... It could have gone so horribly wrong. I know his mum uh, highlighted that on social media for Jack Buckley's role. Yeah, she thanked in, him. In effectively saving yeah. his life because yeah. he, he was putting a lot on the line in that moment, not only the game, but probably his own health and safety at that yeah, point Yeah, well, there's too. some uh, there's images because it was the, the fortune that Jack actually grabbed him by the arm and pulled him around that he didn't land. There it is here, you can see, as he's going up. I'm not sure that Jack knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, no, it, but it... Probably would have done it differently. They probably would have won if he hadn't called it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, that has changed footy where well, someone's guiding you so gently. So, of course, I that's part of the game. Yeah. yeah, it was absolutely remarkable. He, it wasn't just a one-trick pony. That's the great thing about Heaney. He's brilliant. He was the ringmaster. Uh, how important. Now, this one, this is that one-handed grab off another, I think it was a, a Papley kick there. That was the first inside 50 mark they'd had in, in the game. And, of course, he goes back and, and pops it through. All game, they just had to follow him, and eventually he kind of, with his energy, got the rest of them going for that final quarter. And Are you getting excited, them. Tony? Uh, I can't get any more excited than I was on Saturday right. afternoon, so okay. I'm going to downplay it from now <laughs> yep. on. I'm just glad you didn't leave the SCG, because you've got a tendency of leaving early when your teams are down. Yeah, well, I said to my son, they were 27 down, I said, when he gets to 30, we're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, it went the right direction. Yeah, we, well, we had footy, we had league on all Saturday afternoon, yep. but I did hear that score. I heard the Giants were 27 in front, and I'd, I'd give it, I said, well, the Swans can't win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as it turns out, they, they could. Did. And the yes. return of Tom Papley was so important. He was brilliant. Not only his play, but, as you said, his attitude. <laughs> I love that cookie in your face. <laughs> Abrasive attitude. I've never seen a player who can do this and this, which has uh, landed Jason McCartney in a bit of hot water for GWS as well, celebrate like he is about to blow a fluff of valve at any moment. But still perform like his kilometre count just yeah. from the celebrations and running into contests like that would be absolutely off the charts. But where he finds the energy, I wouldn't mind yeah. a piece of that. He's he knew what he was doing there too. I reckon walking, walking they into both Jason. Did. Yeah. 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 They, they both knew what they were doing. It was yes. like, in fact, that's twenty thousand dollars, <laughs> which is the AFL finding GWS 
the AFL own GWS, so they've effectively <laughs> fined themselves. The Ching Christmas party. <laughs> so twenty thousand dollars for GWS as of the today. club. So not yeah. McCartney, the the coach, but the actual club got fined twenty thousand dollars. What was the vibe like in Melbourne on the weekend for that game? It was it everyone going for Sydney or GWS, or did they care who was going to win that game? I think like I, I couldn't believe how many people watched it and were raving about it the next day. There's a huge Sydney Swans fan base in Melbourne because they were once South Melbourne. But also just people just kind of like the Swans. You know, they, they haven't done a lot of stupid things over the years. They've always been good. They're well run. They've got great stars. So people kind of like them down in Melbourne. GWS, you know, Toby Green is divisive. And, you know, they see it a bit of a newer club, so they're not as into it. Yeah, well, the Swans, uh, they get that week off, which is uh, all important.